afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to Portland. Thank you for having me. Um, I get the pleasure of being up here representing 3,300 incredible staff members that work for New Seasons Market here in Portland, Oregon, and New Seasons Market and New Leaf Community Markets down in Northern California. Um, just the most incredible group of human beings I think I have ever worked with. Um, so uh, I want to share with you a very real and very recent story about New Seasons Market. Um, we are the ultimate neighborhood grocery store and fundamental to who we are, we believe that the livelihood of our communities and the prosperities of the communities that we serve is an important part of our mission. Since our founding, we have always believed that the vitality and the profitability of the business has to serve the communities. We also believed that supporting and building a sustainable and equitable regional food economy was part of our mission. Supporting our ranchers, our farmers, our fishermen, our artisan producers and their families was vitally important, but also we wanted to be part of a movement that helped to create human health, environmental health, and also shared prosperity. Integral to our business philosophy since day one was that our most important stakeholder was our staff. That our staff is the biggest competitive advantage that we have. The staff hold the success of the company in their hands. We created a progressive workplace that made sure that we took care of our staff by providing fair wages, industry-leading health care, and unique lifestyle benefits. And we were really proud of that, and we're still proud of that today. But we started to see the landscape changing in Portland over the last 12 to 18 months. And we started to hear from our staff, in particular here in Portland, who have grown up here, saying that they could no longer afford to live in Portland and that there was becoming a greater disparity between their wages and what they could afford to do in their own communities. So in Portland, over the last year, the rents in Portland have gone up 8.7%, which is almost double the national rate. The MIT calculator says that an adult with no children, the living wage in 2014 for them was 947, and in 2015 that went up to 1125. Now the MIT calculator is doesn't include all of the costs of every community. It's just uh, it's an amalgamation of things. But what it does tell us is that the cost of living has gone up dramatically in just one year. That's real, and that creates hardship. So there are problems right now, we've been talking about it today, about income inequity, locally, in the state, in the nation. It's being talked about now globally. It's a real issue that's not just here in Portland, but everywhere, and it's something that as B Corps, we can take a stand on we can take a position on, we can help use our voice to make a difference. So I've heard stories from staff. Um, I went out into the field and I did listening sessions, which was like town halls, where staff got to come together and tell us what's happening, what's good, what's bad, what's not working, what can we do better? And I heard incredible stories from people about what their lives look like today versus last year or the year before. And in particular, there was a young man that came to a listening session uh, who in front of 30 people told me his story about the fact that he grew up three blocks from the store that he works in. And he has worked for New Seasons Market for seven or eight years. And he grew up three blocks away, his family is there, his friends are there, and six months ago he had to move away because he could no longer afford his rent. And he's now living in a place where he has to get up, get on the bus, and commute 30 to 40 minutes just to get into the store. And I thought to myself, we've got to make a significant change. This isn't right. And that that change was going to be big, not only to increase our starting wages, but also how do we adjust all of our wages to make a difference for all of our employees? And how do you do that and remain competitive? Right? The grocery store business is a very competitive retail space. How do you do that and remain competitive and shift the balance so that you can provide the right wages for your staff, but also continue to be a progressive employer and live by the commitments of the mission. 
By the way, New Seasons Market was the first uh, certified B Corp in the world that's a grocery store, and New Leaf Community Markets was the second certified B Corp in the world. So we're very proud of that. So we had to ask ourselves, where do you start? Where do you start with minimum wage? Where do you start? Do you start with what you can afford? And what I'll tell you is if you start with what you can afford, you will never get as far as you need to go. So we started with what do we think is right? What do we think is the right thing for us to do? And the answer was we had to look at what did success look like. And success for us was making sure that our staff felt cared for, that they could thrive in the neighborhoods and the communities that they lived, that they felt like they had great benefits and they had a company that they could work for long term. Um, I would also say we stopped and thought to ourselves, our starting wage is $10 in Portland. Now the minimum wage in Oregon is $9.25. We have for the last decade been ahead of the state and federal minimum wage, but we thought what is the right number? Is it 10? Is it 11? Is it 12? What is the right number? How far can we go as an organization without changes in public policy that change the minimum wage for everybody so there is truly a shared prosperity. So we dug deep. Um, we dug deep. We started doing analysis paralysis. We did modeling. We had conversations. We looked at every which way to Sunday of how to do this to figure out how big of an investment we could make without policy change. And I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that um, I think this was the single biggest challenging problem I have ever had to solve in my entire career because you want to do what's right for your people and your staff. You want to do what's right for their livelihood, but you also have to meet the needs of your shareholders and your stakeholders. So that's when it hit me that this is not just a challenge. This is actually an opportunity, and this is an opportunity for us to innovate and evolve our business. It's an opportunity for us to think differently about how we operate because that's what B Corps do. We engage people to solve problems that have never been solved before. So we knew that raising wages was the right thing to do, and then we had to figure out how to fund it. And the first place everybody's head goes is price. Increase price, pass it on to the customer. Well, let me tell you something. The grocery business is highly competitive, and part of our competitive landscape is we have to make sure that we maintain a fair price and a reasonable price, and we are competitive in the market. And so we knew very quickly price was off the table. We were not going to increase price and pass that on to the customers. So now what do you do? So we thought, okay, let's invest in our staff, right? We're investing in our staff in wages. Our staff always has the answers. The front line always has the answers. What if we engage them differently to help us solve this problem? Years ago, we wanted to make a bigger impact in the environment. We wanted to be able to reduce our waste. So we engaged our staff. The staff figured out how to innovate the waste stream. They figured out how to look at materials differently, supply chain differently. And two years ago, we got certified as a zero waste company, and 92% of our waste gets routed out of landfill as a grocery store. Right? It's, a mar it's remarkable. The answers are in their hands. So we're going to engage staff again. We're going to engage our staff and say, okay, we are all in. We are all in, and we're going to make sure that you're being paid a living wage. We need your help in innovating. We need your help in changing the way that we're doing our business. We need your help in being the friendliest store in town, keeping it the friendliest store in town, making better uh, environments for our customers and our staff, contributing to our community, but being smarter about how we do our business getting more productive, being more efficient, thinking out of the box about how we might be able to run our operating model differently than anybody else. So we're going to engage our staff. So for me, on September 24th, just a few weeks ago, all of this came to a head. I stood in front of 600 of our leaders at our annual meeting from Northern California and Portland, and I told them the following things. First of all, we're going to increase our starting wage to $12. That's a 20% increase in our starting wage. Thank you. And when you increase your starting wage, you have compression on your tenured staff. We have staff that have been with us for 5, 10, 15 years. You want them to feel rewarded and recognized for the work that they've done. The success that the company has today is the success of their contributions. 
So we're also going to make sure that we move all of our wage scales and we're going to give a bump to all of our tenured staff that have worked with us for two years or more to make sure that they're recognized for their work. In addition to that, we're going to keep all of our merit increases for the year for 2016 to make sure that performance is still valued in the company. And we decided to make a bold move and realize that while $12 was a significant movement in the starting wage, it was not enough for the shared prosperity of our community. So we decided to lend our voice to public policy and made sure that we shared with our staff that we'll be taking a stand to use our voice to ask for change in public policy to raise the minimum wage across the state of Oregon. The reality is, we can only go so far. We can only go so, so far without changing the landscape. That we need an equal playing field so that competition, so that businesses, so that shared prosperity can exist across Oregon. Over the last four months, we've been lucky enough to work with some businesses who also have a similar philosophy to us and want to make a difference. You know, you hear in the news all the time that businesses do not want to increase minimum wage, that they're against increasing minimum wage. And I would tell you that is not the truth. There are some businesses that really want to increase minimum wage, but it is a complex and difficult issue. And I feel like at this point in time with that complexity, you don't shy away from it, you lean into it, and you take a stand with it. And so we've been lucky enough to work with many businesses um, to think about how we might be able to make a difference in the minimum wage. Businesses that are in this room, B Corps, uh, Metropolitan Group, The Joinery, Neil Kelly, uh, Loopworks, FMY, FMYI, I almost messed that up, sorry about that, love you guys. Um, but we have lots of B Corps that are also using their voice to make a difference. So when we look at the landscape, we coalesced, we worked together to develop what is our principles, what should our principles be so that when we have a voice with public policy change, we're clear about what we stand for to benefit all communities. And the first thing we looked at was you need to look at the economic differences between urban and rural areas. The state of Oregon has a minimum wage that is the same across the entire state. It doesn't allow you for flexibility for local areas. Our ranchers and fishermen and farmers may not be able to afford a $15 minimum wage like a Portland can. So we need to be able to look at that separately. You also need to identify the differences between small and large businesses. We are a medium-sized business with 3,300 people, and it's very, very complex for us to figure out this problem. You have to be able to accommodate large and small and look at how you can phase in a process to get to a $15 minimum wage for Seattle, like Seattle did or San Francisco, where businesses can build it into their planning cycle and they can build a sustainable model so that everybody can prosper. We have an opportunity to advocate for economic equity. We have an opportunity to use our voice and lead with our values as B Corps. And we know that when we lead with our values, that challenges can be overcome. It doesn't mean they're always easy. It doesn't mean they come quick. But you can overcome your challenges if you live by your values. Our goal is to build a better world. We want to make sure that there is a shared prosperity for everybody, for our staff, for our community, for our neighbors, for our town, for our state, for our nation, for our globe. We have an opportunity to use our global voice to make a difference. I think there's an opportunity for us as a B Corp community to stand up, to speak out, and to take action and show people that there's a different way that you can do business that can make a difference for everybody. Be the change you want to be. Thank you.